you wanna know why? seconds, 8.88 for Peter Clark to shoot out just as well, he's run 165 miles an hour. Jungle Jim Carter, sponsored by Ace Auto Accessories, up in Preston, Hi. Australia's most uh, professionally presented old big, fresh, light up attraction compound. Is it windy outside? Yes, in fact it's blowing a gale. Any calls? No. Hey, did you get that book for me? Yes, finally. Mind you, I had to paddle another kilometre down to Thurston Road to get it. What I'll never understand about bikes is no matter which direction you're going, you always seem to be going against the wind. What you've got to do is lean forward, you know, crouch down like this. Less wind resistance if you make yourself smaller. Makes it much easier. Anyway, it won't be a problem next time. Why is that? You can do the shopping. Excuse me, is this the uh, Limited Infinity? Infinity Limited, yeah. Uh, you are the people that solve mysteries. Well, we try. Come on in. I'm Rick and this is Crystal. How can we help you? Well, you see, I'm being robbed. You say you're being robbed, well, who buy it? Well, you see, it's like this. Now, I drive a truck, a taxi truck, and I do a country run every day on the Western Highway, and I think someone is stealing my petrol. You think? Well, there's no other explanation. Look, I don't work for a company. I own my own van, so I have to cover my own overheads, you know, things like uh, repairs, oil, insurance, petrol. So I keep records, daily, weekly, monthly. Now, about two months ago, this is how much petrol I was using every day. Now I'm using this much. Well, I seem to be filling up all the time. That's very detailed, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're being robbed. Well, how come? Well, you could be travelling further or carrying bigger loads. That would mean you'd use more petrol. Well, I used to do lots of small trips around town, but now I do the country run. But overall, I'm still driving the same number of kilometres and still carrying the same sorts of loads. And now, all of a sudden, for no reason, I'm using more petrol. Well, there's only one thing I can think of. Someone is milking in the tank. Could be right. We could be onto a clever operator here. But it's still a bit early to decide whether you're actually being robbed or not. Can we have a look at the vehicle? Yeah, sure. Look, it'd be great if you could work this one out. You know, petrol's going up again next week. Petrol going up again next week. Oh, oh vortex. Vortex? Oh, what the... Oh, it's you, Plankton. Yes, Vortex. The wind out there, it's terrible. Not now. But it's very... Will you be quiet? I'm listening. They've got a client up there. Oh, blast. That's gone. What were they talking about, Vortex? Petrol, my boy. The high cost of petrol. And I'll tell you what, it's given me an idea. You see, what the world needs desperately is another source of fuel. Something that's cheaper than petrol, but not so hard to find. Why, if I could invent a totally new source of energy, I'd be rich. <sighs> well, that mean I wouldn't have to wear these anymore? It's very embarrassing. And on windy days like this, it's terrible. I had to cross the same street three times. What did you say? I said the wind was so strong, I had to cross the same street three times. It kept blowing me back. Plankton, that's it. The wind. The wind, Vortex. The wind. We'll harness the power of the wind. Well, what a brilliant idea. The wind-powered car. You think it will work, Vortex? Well, of course it'll work. I know it'll work. That's what you said about the steam television. Ah, that was a mere miscalculation. The windmobile. To the drawing board. There she is. And this is where you normally keep it? Every night, from the time I finish work till the time I leave in the morning. 
It's a pretty heavy garage door for someone to force open. Of course, somebody could have a duplicate key. So this as well? Is the petrol tank always locked? All the time. Theo, have you ever noticed that when you get in the van in the morning, that the petrol level is lower than what it was the night before? No, it's always been the same. Well, if somebody's stealing the petrol during the night, wouldn't you expect it to show up on the gauge? I thought maybe they'd you know, fiddle with the gauge, somehow make it look like there's more there. Anything? Dust and grease look, as if they've been there for ages. It doesn't look as if anyone's touched anything, but we'll have the petrol gauge checked just in case. Now, you say you're not carrying bigger loads, but what about the van itself? Well, these bull bars, for example, how long have they been on there? It's always had them on. Well, that sign, that looks pretty heavy. Well, it's aluminium, uh, like this. But the sign's only a kilo or so, not enough to slow me down. Well, what's the purpose of it, anyway? Well, why not made a bit extra from advertising. I use the front for myself, and I rent out the space on the back of an insurance company. Pretty sharp, eh? But that wouldn't have anything to do with it. I've had the sign on there since I started the business. And the van's running okay otherwise? Like a bird, but I'm telling you, it's not the van. Someone must be robbing me. Well, if nobody's getting to the van at night, they must be stealing the petrol during the day. Impossible. I'm on the road all day. But you must stop occasionally. Well, just to pick up and deliver. And you follow a regular route? Well, most of the time I've been delivering for the one company. I pick up the passes in the morning and uh, drop them off the same day. And I follow the same route. Well, tomorrow we're coming with you. That's very good, Vortex. What is it? It's the sail, you dolt. Oh, sail. Is that how it's going to work with a sail? Of course. How else do you drive a wind-powered car? Vortex. What? What happens when it's not windy? What? What do you do when there's no wind? Plankton. The sail is big. Very, very big. Big enough to catch even the slightest breath of wind, all right? Vortex. What? What do you do when there isn't even the teeniest, weensiest breath of wind? Plankton. People who buy my wind-powered car are going to save so much money on petrol that on those very, very rare days where there isn't the teensiest, weensiest breath of wind, they can afford to catch a taxi. Oh, I see. I wonder if I could get a robot on bank card. Good morning, Theo. Oh, morning, Chris. Rick. Good morning. So you brought all your equipment? Yes. If anyone attempts to steal petrol from this van today, we'll be ready for them. How much fuel is in the tank? Oh, I filled it up last night. Oh, that should be enough for the distance we're travelling today. Oh, hang on, Chris. Shouldn't we check on how much fuel we use just in case it is different? Of course we will. Petrol gauge isn't accurate, but a petrol pump is. At the end of the day, we simply go to a petrol station and fill the tank up again. The amount we put in is the same as how much we use, right? Of course, yeah. Right, we're ready. OK, well, I'll just drive my normal route and uh, you keep your eyes open. OK, let's go. Oh, really? I'm so glad for you. Now, you see, I've worked out what to do on the days when there's no wind. You see, what you do is this. You have electric motors on the car, right? And you have a windmill on your home, say, and the windmill is connected uh, to a generator. And the generator is connected to a battery. So the windmill drives the generator, which charges the battery. So on the days when there's no wind, you connect the battery to the electric motors and drive to work. 
plankton. Yes, Walter. That is ridiculous. Is it? Yes, plankton. Don't you know that when you turn one form of energy into another, you always lose some, huh? By getting the wind to turn the generator, you're just wasting energy. But uh, you're still using it. I don't see how you can waste it if you're storing it in a battery. Now, that's another thing. Batteries and electric motors are very heavy. And as you know, in order for a car, especially a wind-powered car to work, it has to be as light as possible. Now, this vehicle will weigh barely 150 kilos. Even with you in it. Even with me in it? Yes, Plankton. Uh, vortex. Yes, Plankton? Why with me in it? Oh, well, for heaven's sake, man, somebody has to test drive the thing. That's stop number three. Distance travelled so far? Uh, 110 kilometres. Average speed? about 90 kilometres an hour. And there's no sign of any funny business so far. That was his last delivery. Let's meet him back in town and do a petrol check. OK. Wake up, what? Plankton! No. The moment has come! Voila! <laughs> Note the efficient, lightweight construction. The superior direct steering, the no-nonsense suspension, and the no-frills attached energy-saving appointment. How does it stop? How does it stop? How does it stop? You're so negative, Plankton. The important thing is make it go, not make it stop. But how does it stop? Well, how do you stop a boat? You've, you've furled the sails. What do you do if you want to stop suddenly? Questions, questions, questions. Now, these are minor adjustments we can make during the actual road test tomorrow. <laughs> I don't understand it. Our observations confirmed everything you told us about your work pattern. But the van is using too much petrol. Well, are you sure nobody came near the van while it was parked? Positive. We were watching the van every minute of the day. The thief would have to be invisible. Well, let's just work out what we know and what we don't know. One, the van is locked up at night and there is no drop in level of petrol overnight. Therefore, the loss has to be occurring during daytime. Right. But we've watched the van all day and no one has come near it. That seems to rule out the thief idea and we know it's not the motor because we checked fuel consumption and it was very efficient and the petrol's only disappearing while the van's on the road. Right. Maybe it's leaking out. No, no way. Look, you'd smell it. Besides, you'd see a puddle. All right. Where do we go from here? Well, there's still the possibility that the van is wasting energy somehow. Well, how do you mean? Well, for instance, stop-start driving. Lots of acceleration and braking waste petrol. But I don't stop-start. It's true, Chris. Theo only stopped three times today, and he was driving at an average speed of 90 kilometres an hour. Well, there are other things. Tires too soft, wheels badly aligned. I check the tires every two days. There's nothing wrong with the wheels. They're fine. Slipping clutch, poor lubrication. Come on, Chris. We know the van's in good mechanical condition. Well, I don't know. I mean, there has to be some explanation. Petrol can't just disappear into thin air. Sorry. What did you say? I said petrol can't just disappear into thin air. Wait a minute. Maybe it can. Where's that tape? Here it is. What are you going on about, Rick? Wait, wait. There, that's what's missing. A dragster? No, behind the dragster, slowing it down. A parachute? But I don't have a parachute on my van. Are you sure? Yes, of course you do. I do? Of sorts, on the roof. The sign? Almost a square metre of flat sign driving into the wind. At your speed, it's acting like a parachute. Wind resistance, the one form of energy wastage which gets worse the faster you travel. 
But how could one simple sign make so much difference? By creating air turbulence. Listen, Theo, there's one way to find out. Tomorrow we'll do exactly the same run, but without the sign. First the Wright brothers, and now Vortex. No, oh, it's a perfect day. Not a cloud in the sky and a breeze from the south. Ha! Well, Plankton, this is it. We are about to make history and you're going to have your name up in lights. As my bones in plaster. Oh, come, man. Where's the excitement? Where's the daring? Where is the, the spirit of adventure? Where's the break? Brakes? What's the matter with you? I don't trust this thing. I still remember that clockwork helicopter you made last year. I give you my word, this is perfectly safe. But I don't know how to steer it. There's no brakes! All right. It's all right. If that's your attitude, give me the goggles. I will be the test pilot. I will be the first to make this historical voyage. Flight, trip, whatever. Avast there, you swabs, make fast there. We sail with the tide. All ashore that's going ashore. Stand by to go about. Lower the mainsail. Aye, aye, sir. Splice the main brace. Oil the jib. Holy mackerel, we're moving. It works! It works! It actually works! I'm a genius! <laughs> well, you've done better than an 8% improvement on yesterday. So it was the sign all the time. Oh, not at the start. When you changed to the country run, you suddenly had greater wind resistance at the higher speed. And if you're going to zoom around quickly, that's one thing you'll have to reduce. The thing is, most cars, racing cars, boats, trains, and especially planes, are streamlined so that they cut the air easily. And they're designed so they don't leave a lot of turbulence behind them. So does this mean that I can't advertise anymore? Not at all. Yes, but if the sign's making so much trouble... Only because of where it is. Look at this truck. That air shield on the cabin is actually reducing the resistance. On this diagram, you can see how a truck normally meets a lot of wind resistance above the cabin. By adding the air shield, the wind flows over the top of the truck much more smoothly. So you can still keep your sign. It's just a matter of where you put it. You can, well, lean it on the same angle as the windscreen, for example. Yes, but what happens to my advertising on the back? All right, we'll turn it round. Or put it on the back of the van, anywhere, so long as it doesn't disturb the flow of air around the van. It's the same with everything, really. Well, even riding a push bike. We reduce the wind resistance by leaning forward into the wind. Exactly. In fact, Rick was just about to demonstrate this very point. I am? Yes. You see, it's your turn to go down and buy lunch. Well, they want to know what. Don't feel bad about it, Vortex. Good idea. Just need it a little bit more time. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, it'll take short. But I've been thinking about uh, another type of braking system. Right, and I don't want to talk about it. In fairness.